welcome to my youtube channel mechanical magic mechanical learning tutorials so in this video i am talking about a phase transformation at constant pressure process or you can say in the field of engineering the formation of a steam which will be used into the power plants or you can say to run the turbines and to generate the electricity so let us start over here just you can see so in order to consider the phase changes of water so here the consideration of 1 kg of ice at T1 just you can see at uh, 10 degree centigrade and at 1 atmospheric pressure and that will be 1.0133 bar. So generally that ice it will be kept in a piston cylinder arrangement which is frictionless and weightless. So that all are the assumptions. So let this ice in a cylinder be heated at a uniform rate. So assuming over here the heating process has to be done at a constant atmospheric pressure. So the here the heat supply Q that should be equal to the enthalpy of H. So here it will be you can see on to the X axis. So the following changes would be observed during the heating process at a constant atmospheric pressure. So just you can refer the figure for the process A to B. So the temperature of ice increasing from minus 10 degree centigrade to 0 degree centigrade as a limit. So for that the heat supplied during uh, heating is called as a sensible heat of ice and the temperature at 0 degree centigrade represents the melting point of the ice. So for the sensible heat of the ice just you can see HI that should be equal to Cp of I into temperature difference. So here it will be the 0 and T1. So just you can take the Cp of ice it should be equal to 2.1 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. Now we will see the process B to C. So the ice begins to melt at 0 degree and two phase mixture of ice and water it will be coexist in equilibrium at 0 degree centigrade. So liquid plus solid. So here it is a small decreasing in the volume which is particular to the water. So basically the heat supplied to convert 1 kg of ice at 0 degree centigrade into the water at 0 degree centigrade is called latent heat of the fusion or you can say enthalpy of the fusion. So that will be equal to Li equal to 335 kilojoule per kg at an atmospheric pressure. So the process BC generally represent as a latent heat of fusion or can say enthalpy of fusion. Now observing the one more process CD. So generally further heating the temperature of the water increases until it reaches to the temperature of vaporization or you can say TS or you can say boiling. Such a liquid is called as a saturated liquid. So the temperature corresponding to the point D over here, as you can see, is known as a saturated temperature or you can say boiling point of the water. So this saturated temperature increasing with the increasing into the pressure and it is equal to 100 degrees centigrade at one atmospheric pressure. So generally the heat energy required to convert water at 0 degree centigrade in a saturated liquid this is called as a enthalpy of the water and that will be representing as a HF. So HF is nothing but that will be the enthalpy of the water or you can say heat required to convert water at a 0 degree centigrade in saturated liquid that should be called as a enthalpy of the water. Now process DE, just you can see over here, on heating of the saturated liquid, the vaporization of the water start at the constant temperature. 
So again, we get two phase mixtures of liquid plus vapor. So the state of the steam after the complete of the evaporation of the water at a saturated temperature that would be called as a dry saturated steam. So while the water particles associated with the dry saturated steam in the water vapor state is called as a wet steam. So basically dry steam and wet steam. So the heat energy required to vaporize the saturated liquid into the dry saturated steam that will be called as a latent heat of the vaporization or in the field of thermodynamics enthalpy of the evaporation and it will be representing as a HFG. So during the conversion of the liquid into the steam the specific volume is being increased. Now the process E to F. So on further heating of the dry saturated steam, the rise in the temperature of the steam is resumed and the specific volume of the steam also increase. So as from the diagram, this process is called as a superheating of the steam. So the steam is called as a superheated steam. It is in a gaseous state. So if T superheated represents the temperature of the superheated steam at a certain state, the difference of T superheated and saturation temperature Ts of the steam is called as a degree of superheat. Or you can say the simple way T superheated minus T saturated. So the heat energy supplied to the conversion on of dry saturated steam into the superheated steam at a temperature of T superheat is called as a heat of superheats. So basically the change of the processes so solid to liquid it would be said to be a fusion or that should be carried out the melting process. Liquid to solid once again the fusion and the process is freezing. Then solid to vapor sublimations or you can say defrosting. Vapor to solid, the name is sublimations and the process representing as a frosting. Liquid to vapor, that will be the evaporation or you can say evaporation process. And vapor to liquid, that should be, name is condensation. So you can carry out the condensation process. So if you understand the formation of the steam, then you can like, subscribe and share mechanical magic, mechanical learning tutorials.